Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback look at the LG Expo. This was another smartphone released in 2009, and it was America's first projector phone. It was really one of the earliest smartphones that LG designed with snap-on accessories that expanded on the functionality of the phone, and in today's term that would be marketed as modular. But in fact, I still don't think this is a strict definition of modular because you can't switch out the screen, you can't switch out the processor, the memory, things like that. But you also can't do that with the LG G5, and they still call that a modular phone. So we had the optional accessories including a Pico projector that you could snap on with these contact pins removing the back cover and that allowed you to project a 80 inch virtual screen on the wall for viewing back entertainment, productivity, and for gaming. The phone was also one of the last Windows Mobile smartphones released before we moved on to Windows Phone, so it still ran on a rather clunky interface. However, it was also one of the few Windows Mobile devices that had a 1 GHz processor powered by Snapdragon, which was considered Considered very fast for the time, along with 512 megabytes of RAM. The phone also has a biometric fingerprint scanner, another unique feature for the time that we now see is very commonplace. It also acts as a trackpad, which is actually pretty cool. So you can use it to swipe back and forth between the menu and use it to press down and select things. So it acts as an optical trackpad, just like on BlackBerry devices. There's also a keyboard built onto the LG Expo, making it again a very good productivity tool for business people who wanted to type out longer messages when on the go. It's a four row keyboard, it doesn't have additional row for numbers, but it's fairly spacious and easy to use. The phone also came with a 5 megapixel camera on the back with an LED flash, speaker, and more interestingly, the S-Class interface on top of Windows Mobile. And as a smartphone, there were all the essential connectivity options on board, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and 3G for the time. Alright, so if we tap on start, we could see that underneath it was running on Windows Mobile 6.5 Professional Edition, so icons were slightly larger and easier to tap than on previous iterations which were not very intuitive for finger use. However, it's still employing a resistive touchscreen, which is why you can see this slightly weird tether. Uh, it's actually for a stylus that LG did not integrate into the phone, but you needed to exert more pressure on the screen to get a response. One of the benefits of Windows Mobile, just like Windows Phone, is going to be on productivity and in usage with Microsoft services. So for instance, there is a faux suite of Office tools built on in, which allows you to quickly view, edit, and create new Word, PowerPoint, and Excel documents on the fly. And here's the S-Class menu, which would seem, again, very familiar if you've uh, viewed our BL40 chocolate throwback video. It has the same exact layout of these uh, icons categorized by multimedia, application settings, and communications, and it's a little hard to make out since there's no labels for any of these uh, apps until you use it in the portrait view. LG also has a multitasking key that you can simply tap on with your right hand to have access to this page where you can go back and forth between different types of open applications. Uh, a pretty nice implementation built onto the hardware. So next let's take a quick look at the camera. The interface here is pretty simple and it's similar to their own S-Class phones such as the BL40, the Chocolate, and it actually has a pretty good autofocus sensor, although images are very slow to be captured in 2018 standards. Still, it's not a bad camera by any means, and you can also edit, view, and share them to social media when you're ready. So next let's talk about the projector, since that's the main selling point, in my opinion, of the Expo. The Expo's projector was actually not bundled with the phone. You could pick it up optionally for around $150 on its own, so it definitely wasn't cheap, but it was the price you paid for getting cutting-edge hardware. And it actually snaps in really easily. Uh, it's actually ironic because when I look at how easy it is to snap on this module, I just think that the LG's G5 implementation is so clumsy. The reason is because after you snap this on, you simply have to slide, slide open the projector lens and there's just a simple pop-up that says if you want to use it, simply swipe and now the entire display will be mirrored onto the projected uh, image. So it's as simple as snapping it on and turning the unit on. That's all you need to do, compared to the G5's modules, where you needed to take out the battery, reset the phone, turn it on, install the software from the Play Store, and after all of these processes, finally use some of its accessories. Uh, so the ironic thing is, basically LG's older phone had a better modular implementation than the G5. 
So the projected screen definitely isn't very bright. A Pico projector's main selling point is on energy efficiency, especially when compared to regular LCD LED bulbs. Uh, and of course, this one doesn't have any fan, so it's completely silent during operation. It simply mirrors the entire phone's display, which I think is really cool because you can interact with anything from the phone without having to worry about it uh, being projected or not. So it doesn't just limit you to videos. You can also browse the web, you can play games, uh, you can do anything, including view back presentations presentations uh, in office and it will all be accessible. So right now we are in this portrait view but I can sli slide out the keyboard and you can see the screen is out also a slightly larger. I can also adjust the focus using a dial on the side of the projector which is actually pretty easy to do. So as a quick demonstration here is a trial version of uh, a racing game that we have on the phone. And the experience would be better if we uh, connected this phone to a Bluetooth controller uh, or use the OTG functionality because if you're interacting with the phone's display or you know using it to maneuver uh, the motion sensing, then it's also going to disrupt the image a little bit. And as a whole, it still makes for a pretty enjoyable experience. It's crazy that you can have this large view uh, of gaming or playing back media and movies through YouTube right in the palm of your hands or in your pocket um, as you're on the go. So Web browsing is certainly not a highlight on most Windows mobile powered phones simply because Internet Explorer offers a very clunky experience uh, even on Windows Mobile 6.5. And as a result, you can install alternatives such as Opera Mini that uh, enhances the experience greatly. So that's the LG Expo, another memorable phone from LG back in 2009, and evidence that uh, LG for a very long time have been innovating in the smartphone industry. This was our look back of the LG Expo, a pretty memorable uh, multimedia slash business phone with both a fingerprint scanner, a slide out keyboard, and a projector built onto a compact form factor from almost a decade ago.